Hello everyone, this is Suzanne at Guy Crochet and Chatter. How is everyone today? I have a video attached to this video. So at the end, you wanna watch that video. I did a video of me getting in and out of the Jeep. I successfully did it. And uh, we'll talk more about that at the end of this video. Today, I have a great verse devotional. I can't wait to get started. I want to thank everyone. More people are pressing that like button for me. Fantastic. If everyone can just keep that up now, if you just pop in for a quick listen and go on your way out, press that like button or press it when it begins. Because I know you're going to like it. <laughs> All right, let's get to our devotional. Today's verse comes from Hebrews 10, 38. My righteous ones will live by faith, but I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. That's a very important verse. I'm trying to drink a lot more water today. I'm behind on drinking my water, so I may take a few sips now and then. All right, let's get to it. My righteous ones will live by faith. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. In every vision, profit, project, or venture of faith, there comes a time when choices must be made and steps must be taken. There's no getting out of it. Some of those choices are deeply internal, affecting our moods and expectations. I know that's true because some of my expectations are a little bit more advanced than what they really are. And I have to step out in faith and say, I know it will get better. Some of those choices are deeply internal, affecting our moods and expectations. Others are external, involving practical decisions that depend on the vision being true. Subtly, deeply, superficially, practicality, mentally and emotionally, we are constantly living according to what we really believe. You can tell a lot by a first person's faith of the way that they're living. The question is whether what we really believe involves faith in God's words, promises, and purposes, or something else. If we feel hopeless, desperate, discouraged, or bitter, it's almost certainly something else. Not a good something else. Unbelief focuses on the situation as it appears right now and all the negative directions it could turn in the future. Faith refuses to look at the ways things appear right now, at least as a true reflection of reality, and insist on envisioning God's goodness down the road. Wow. That really hit me between the eyes because... My faith right now refuses to look at the way the things appear right now. So faith refuses to look at the way things appear right now. That's where my faith is. I have to envision God's goodness down the road. Lord, I know you're with me every step of the way through this, whatever it is you're experiencing whatever you're going through and know that there is light at the end of the tunnel and that light is the son of God. God's goodness down the road. That's what we have to look at. Focus on that. Unbelief sees a negative turn of events and worries or despairs. Faith looks at a negative turn of events and then looks to God for how we will, how he will do something. Faith looks at a negative turn of events and then looks to God for how he will do something. So my faith looks at the negative events going on with my knee, especially right now. But I have to look to God and look to how he's going to do something in the future.
Um, belief sees a negative turn of events and worries uh, or despairs. Faith looks at a negative turn of events and then looks to God for how he will do something awesome in it. Change it a little bit. I know that God is going to do something awesome in my future. This, this depression isn't going to last forever. My anxiety isn't going to last forever. My fears, my depression, all that is temporary. And even when it's a long, debilitating sickness, cancer, you know, dealing with a lot more battles than what I'll ever face. And faith has to know in those times that God has something better down the line and he will give us all the encouragement and strength we need to get through it. Faith insists that it will turn out for the good of those who love him that it will set up an opportunity for his kindness to be seen. All That all of the strategies of the enemy and the trials of this world will be turned to beauty, joy, and praise. Hallelujah. The reality of those promises simply isn't a question for the believer. A believer believes. When we are told to guard our hearts as a wellspring of life, Proverbs 4.23, this is why. Your heart will sometimes lie to you. It will make you think you believe when you don't. It will claim great faith while dragging you down into despair. It will weigh you down with discouraging thoughts, even while you are praying for great victories. It will make you shrink back. Don't let it. Mm -mm. Faith and discouragement can't coexist. Faith and discouragement cannot coexist. The focus of faith is hope, always. Live by it, walk by it, and never turn away. God will call your faith righteous and will reward you for it. You are in a battle for your heart, and if you don't give up, you will win. Oh, I'm not giving up. Mm -mm. I want to win. I want to hear, well done, my faithful servant, enter into your reward. Discouragement is to re be resisted just like sin. And we're all going to have those moments in our life, and I know most of you already know this that are watching my videos, where you're on your last straw. You're hanging on to that last rope. That shows that you are stepping out still in faith, knowing that this too shall pass. And over my lifetime, those things that I worried about, I fretted about, I cried about, guess what? They passed by, and I am in a much better place now. So as our faith grows, our strength meter goes up, our faith meter goes up, and... We are looking through the eyes of Jesus. And if we can look through the eyes of Jesus and act accordingly and try to look at things through Jesus' eyes, when Jesus went to the cross, he knew it was going to be a horrible death, but love overtook all that suffering that he was going to suffer on the cross, his love for us. He willingly went to the cross for us to take our horrible sin upon him. Faith. Hope. Don't give up. Believers, believe. My righteous ones will live by faith. I want you to say that with me. My righteous ones will live by faith. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. I say that whole verse with me. My righteous ones will live by faith, but I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. Hebrews 10, 38.
So think upon this today. Let your faith go out ahead of you. I really like that one. Believers believe. This was taken from my One Year Praying in Faith devotional book by Chris Tigreen. There you go. All right. I, like I mentioned before, I did a video of me getting in and out of the Jeep safely. And it was wonderful today. I did all my exercises before my therapist came. And then we went out, got in and out of the Jeep. We walked a little bit further than we did before. And today, sadly, was the last day of her being with me. I'm going to miss her. I came to love her. And she was great. God sent her to me. I know that just wasn't by accident because she was so encouraging, so soft-spoken. And she said I was doing really, really good, that I really, I've set myself up good now to go into outpatient therapy. And she told me, no, this is going to be a whole different rodeo that you're going to face. They're going to stretch that knee. They're going to bend it. And you're going to be doing a whole series of exercises. Some of them are not going to feel so great. But remember, in the end, what is your goal? My faith will step out and be ahead of me. I won't let discouragement get in there, depression. I will know that I believe that through it all, my faith will sustain me and I'm going to be okay. It may not feel like it at the time. I know when I first had this surgery, it was like, wow, that really hurts. But it got better day by day. I'm still not at the point where I'm going to jump on the bed wagon and say, yeah, let's do my other knee. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, 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 no. They say that you will forget all about this. You'll feel so good. And my right knee is this moderate arthritis right now. I'm thinking three years, four years, ten. <laughs> Maybe the Lord will come before then and spare me that. But um, I'm very proud of myself and the progress I've made and how you've encouraged me on here and praying for me. And I do say prayers for all of you daily that your day goes well and whatever you're facing, that you let your faith jump ahead of you and carry you through. All right, everyone. Now, remember, coming up right after this one, I attached it, is a video of me getting in and out of my Jeep. And I'm just so proud of that. So, I, my great news for today is, and my great blessings, I can shower finally. Yay! I can walk longer distances. I can get in and out of bed. I can get in and out of the Jeep. I am walking with my cane. Uh, I'm practicing that now. I'm not quite weaned from the walker yet, but I think when I get to physical therapy, that's one of the first things they're gonna do is, is teach me now to walk on the cane, which I'm looking forward to that. So, you know, if we look, look through our day and pick out our blessings like all right, some bad things happened today, but let's go back and look at the blessings too. Maybe it's you were out and you just missed being in an accident. That's a blessing. You know, there's many things, there's many kernels of blessings during the day that we don't even realize. Try to spot those blessings throughout this day. All right, everyone, this is Suzanne and Lord willing, I'll be back on tomorrow with another video. I'm thinking in another week or so, maybe two, we're going to get full blast back into the Revelation study. I do a more intense study uh, with Revelation. Um, I study more, and um, I just want to be fully prepared for that. So you take care. I love each and every one here. Remember to press that like button. Take care. Bye-bye. Suzanne, as you all know, I'm going to be getting in my Jeep. Dipsy, my physical therapist, is helping. Today is her last day with me. She's been absolutely wonderful. So we're going to get in the Jeep. Okay. So first of all, I step up like this, and then I turn around. 
Roger, I turned facing you. Mm -hmm. All right, well, you're in the camera, right? I got you. Yeah, you got to face Okay, me. so I got to face my husband. And then I bring up this foot and I scooch my butt on the seat. And then I lift and push back right, like this. And then I lift my knee like this. And I'm in the seat. Watch your feet. <laughs> there you go. Now to get out, I do the same thing. Come up like this, bring my foot. This process happens over time. The first time I was really nervous. Then I go right down with the band. My foot up, my other foot, push up, and then I step down. And that's how we do the Jeep. Yay! So Good job. I'm very happy about that. So <laughs> I will talk to you more in a little while.